Are you still kind of tapped out on, <laughs> on a season two? It's not even about being tapped out. It's more about me feeling like wanting to honor what Watchmen was before I became a part of it. And that the legacy of Watchmen is Alan and Dave created it. Um, and, uh, and it sat for 30 years. Obviously, Zach, Zach made his movie, which was a pretty canonical um, adaptation of, of, the, of the 12 issues. And then we made our season of television. And then, and that was my, that was my turn. You know, it's like I got in the middle of the dance floor for a minute and got to do my move, but then you retreat to the edge of the circle and it's someone else's turn to dance. And uh, this is a horrible metaphor because I'm, you don't want to see me dance under any circumstances. Suffice to say that I just feel like what's best for Watchmen, this thing that I love, is for someone else to take their, their shot at it. And I think that that's just going to be much more interesting than anything that I would do um, moving forwards. And it's not that I take the opportunity for granted or that I wouldn't, you know, I've learned that not acting, not working with actors again is stupid. So I would love to work with Carrie Coon again. And, and I would love to work with Gene Smart again and Tim Blake Nelson and Justin Thoreau and Kevin Carroll and, you know, and Giovanna Depo, who I worked with twice now, like these actors in the world of Watchmen. But at the same time, like, unless I have an idea that is, is important to me as Tulsa 21 was, then I shouldn't do it. And I haven't had that idea. And I want to create the space versus people are waiting for me to change my mind. I want to create the space for people to come forward and say, I have an idea. And I, I issue this invitation to anyone out there. If you have an idea, you know, figure out a way to pitch it. Like, but probably not to me, but like Watchmen is not mine. Um, it's ours. And, uh, I, I want to see what, what someone, how someone else interprets this, this incredible story. My last question for you, supposing this is the end of Angela Abar and this story, I'm curious if you feel like the show ends on a hopeful note, because we've seen Hooded Justice tried to get justice and, and failed. Dr. Manhattan, with all his powers, um, you know, her grandfather says he could have done a lot more. Um, rooting out systemic racism is hard. Uh, as we saw in the show, and Dr. Manhattan didn't solve poverty and he didn't solve education. Supposing that Angela does inherit his powers, do you think this ends uh, on a hopeful note? If you were a lawyer and I were a lawyer, I would, I would, I would demand that you rephrase that question because if I answer it, then it, then it explicitly agrees with the premise that she is a god <laughs> if okay. I say it's hopeful. So let's just say we're going to stay in the ambiguous space of not answering that, but what, but what is clear is that she is willing to become a God because she, why else would she eat an egg yeah. um, or step in the pool in the way that she does? So she's accepting the challenge, a challenge issued not from um, John Osterman or Cal Abar or Dr. Manhattan, whatever you want to call him, but actually a challenge that is issued to her by her grandfather. Um, the last thing that he says to her is, um, he was a good, talking about Dr. Manhattan. He was a good, he was a good man, but he could have done more. And so now we get the sense that at least Angela is signing up for, um, doing more. Uh, so whether or not it works out, I think that that's basically the call to action for all of us right now and not to, not to pivot back into the real world, but I, but that's what always gives me optimism. That's, you know, that was the idea in Tomorrowland too, which is like, the future is something that do, it's not something that happens to you. It's something that you make happen. So it, by showing Angela is willing to try to do more, like that's the clarion call for optimism. And so if we're basically saying, uh, I don't think that this moment is going to re- go, going to lead to a better future, then that's the way what I'm hearing is. So you aren't willing to do anything about it, you know, and that, and so when you see all these people in the streets, and Lou was just talking about this the other day. I had, you know, the benefit of being on a, a panel with him. And he was wildly optimistic about the moment that we're having um, uh, right now. And understandably, um, 
uh, Yaya wasn't cynical, but he was concerned that it was fleeting, you know, or like, um, like what, what's the perspective that I should have in this moment from one of our elders, you know, who's basically seen the, the, you know, the, the, the American century in an entirely different context. And so like, I, 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 I would say that, um, that this ending is just as hopeful as the ending of the Old Testament, the original Watchmen, which is there's a single character who holds in his hands the ability to expose this plot of Vites. Uh, he's holding Rorschach's journal in his hands, and uh, he doesn't know whether he should throw it in the kook pile or, or whether it should be published. And his editor says to him, I leave it entirely in your hands. And so that's the idea is like, op, it, it, it's, it's, it's just as much of, as hopeful as it is in, in the eye of the beholder. If you see it as hopeful, then it's an optimistic ending. If you think that she's just going to sink to the bottom of the pool and it was just like sort of an elaborate um, uh, prank that, uh, that, that Cal played on her, um, uh, then that, that holds true too. It's a Rorschach test, but it's, it's, a, it's a comment more on the person who's watching it or reading it than it is on, on what actually happens next. Though I think that you and I both know there's going to be more Watchmen. Like, I mean, that's going to happen. Uh, and whether or not the individuals who decide that they want there to be more Watchmen pick this story up where it left off, or they, or they do an entirely different kind of Watchmen story, um, that's, that's up to them. But I, I am seeing like a lot of people who respond to the show are catalyzed and interested in what the world would look like if it were being reshaped by <laughs> Angela Abar. Um, and uh, I, don't have, I don't have good answers to that question, but that's, that's, why, um, that's why it cut to black when it did. <laughs>